Good evening. I'd like to open the July the 25th, 2023 Bethel Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. And I'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America let's have the commissioners introduce themselves you want to start mr legnard bob legnard commissioner paul shanley commissioner danny person commissioner linda curtis alternate rob wallace alternate ken stevens chair Kenny Kessler, Commissioner. Doug Cuny, Alternate. Staff, Beth. Beth Kavagna, Planning Director. Casey Galvis, Planning Secretary. David McCollum, Land Use Coordinator. Thank you. And I'll read the uh, personal electronic device use policy. Please note for the record that any personal electronic devices used by the Commission members is for the purpose of reviewing materials located in the Google Drive located on the town's website. Oh, shit. Oh. <clears throat> so we're going to start with um, the resumption of the public hearing for East Station Place at 61 South Street, site plan, special permit, 14 unit excavation and fill. Good evening, my name is Peter Olson. I'm an attorney with an office here in Bethel at 275 Greenwood Avenue. My firm name is Land Use and Conservation Council. I'm here tonight on behalf of East Station Place LLC, which is a Verde Properties company represented in the front row by Kurt Verde, our engineer, Doug DeVesta, and our landscape architect, Sabine, whose last name I can't remember, are on <laughs> Zoom. Um, so we initially presented this project to you at your public hearing held on June 27th. We had, um, David, can you call up the um, architectural plans and scroll to page nine? I just want to have something in the background to remind everybody what we're talking about. That's obviously our pretty drawing of what we think this will look like when we're done. Uh, page nine, please is just the front and rear elevations of the building. Okay, thank you. Uh, we had received a set of initial engineering comments prior to that public hearing, and Doug DeVesta and A2 Land Consulting worked to provide a response prior to that hearing. So the plans that we presented on June 27th were our revised plans, um, and we've not made any changes since then. But the hearing was continued to this meeting for the purposes of receiving engineering comments on those revised plans. We received those comments today. We reviewed them and we think we can address them in the hearing tonight. And our hope is that since there's only four comments in the revised engineering comment or comments on the revised plan, our hope is that you'll close the hearing tonight and we can address those remaining concerns as conditions of approval. So I asked David to bring that up um, to refresh your recollection. What we've proposed is something that should look like three separate houses from South Street. Uh, and then underneath in the basement level, they'll be, they'll be all be connected in a single building so that we can share <clears throat> utilities, particularly water service, sewer service across the three buildings. So it'll look like three structures, but have a single basement. Um, one thing we did after the last public hearing, and this went out last week, is we went out to the site and we constructed some two by four walls to give an indication of what the final retaining walls might look like. Let me have Kurt describe exactly what we did. Um, and for those of you who got a chance to see it, hopefully you can match up with these things, what you saw out there. Kurt. Yep. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, so simply put, we have uh, address, please. Uh, Kurt Verde. Um, I live at 7 Bradley Lane, San Diego. Thank you. Uh, simply put, we uh, went out to the site and um, in a specific location that's identified under our engineering plans, the section A through the property, uh, we constructed two two by four uh, goalposts, for lack of a better term, that were really to show the top and bottom of the two tiered retaining walls that we're proposing to build uh, on the uh, northern, northerly side of the site. So we've got a crossbar at the top. And the bottom of each wall. 
was there a reason to go out and take a look at it? I've not done no. it. I was able to I was able to go out there and look at it. Uh, well, if I wanna... let us know. Okay. Thanks, Kurt. Um, to address the engineering comments that we received, there were four of them. I'll, I'll address two of them first, then I'll turn it over to Doug to address the first two. Item number three um, says the sight line from the proposed driveway entrance toward the west will require a sight line easement from the adjacent property owner so that a clear sight line can be maintained. So the commission can't require us to get an easement, mostly because we can't guarantee that we can get one. The owner of that property may not be willing to give it. That being said, we'll give it a try. We'll talk to them and see if we can get a sight line easement. Um, the town would have the right to maintain sight lines within the town right of way. That won't cover all the area that the engineer is referring to, but we'll do our best. I would note that it's mostly a driveway. <clears throat> Um, and number four, the reconstructed sidewalk along South Street should be a minimum of four feet wide in accordance with town and ADA requirements. We're hoping to keep the existing sidewalk in place if it's in good enough shape. We measured that at three foot nine inches, so almost four. Um, there may be areas where we have to replace it, and when we replace it, we'll do it at four feet. But if we don't have to replace it, we don't really want to replace it. So that's our answer to that comment. Um, let me ask Doug to go through comments one and two and how we anticipate being able to address those. Doug. Hey, good evening. My name is Doug DeVesta, fresh engineer, represent the applicant. I just want to make one correction as what Peter was saying. It's three, 3.9 feet, not three feet, nine inches. So it's 3.9 feet. So it's almost four feet at that point. Um, the first comment Doug, was- Doug, hold me. on one second. David, yeah. can you bring up um, the revised site plan SE5? I'll have that up shortly. Is that coming on the screen okay? Yep. 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 Yes, good. Got it. Got so it, the okay. con so the comment from um, Todd Ritchie was putting drain discharge pipes should not be connected uh, to the storm water drainage systems to prevent the potential of stormwater backing up in the footing drain. The footing drain should not, uh, should discharge to daylight. Um, what we're thinking is that right now we've got it going into the detention system, but what we're looking at is possibly taking it out to the east side of the property um, between the retaining wall that's in that's east of the handicap space, run it down the run it down the, the side the side property line and drain and bring it out towards the um, the lower retaining wall. Um, based on our soil testing out there, we were down 20 some odd feet. We didn't hit no groundwater. There was no model indication. So I think the there would be no um, no no evidence of any water coming out of that pipe. So based on ground, based on the soil testing. The second comment mm -hmm. was um, the proposed high overflow stormwater level spreader uh, shown directly adjacent to the 12.5 foot high retaining wall is not feasible. Storm water should not be directed behind a retaining wall. Levels better at the base of a lower wall. Um, we recommend it. So what, what he's thinking is that we would bring it down towards the uh, lower retaining wall between the uh, property line and the lower wall. Um, what we're thinking instead is that we would provide um, an extra set of galleries out in the parking lot area, under the parking lot area, um, right now, we've got the overflow um, in the, David, can you point to the, or give me control and I'll, I'll point it out on the screen here. Doug, can you see my mouth? Why have, okay. So if you're looking at, there's a, there's a manhole right here. This pipe going out is in the actual riser of the manhole. What we would do is take that rise, take that pipe, instead of bringing it to a little spreader, which we have right behind the upper wall, we would bring it out towards the east and put in some gal overflow galleries right in here in, in the event that the, the system does reach its capacity and have some additional infiltration system in here. So, so I think we can address both those questions uh, very simply uh, by, again, showing the footing drains coming out along the easterly property line and just charging it 
in the general area where my mouse is. And then the second one show a potential additional dry wells in this area in here, because we, again, we do have uh, very sandy soils up in that area. So I think that I think we addressed those comments. Peter talked about three and four already. Thank you, Doug. You're welcome. David, can you call up the turning diagram for the fire marshal, specifically number three? We received two comments from Fire Marshal Tom Galliford. One of them was asking whether the buildings were treated as one building or three buildings. And the response is it's one building for his purposes because we have one lateral serving the water for the building, even though it does look like three up above. But the second question he had was to demonstrate that the turning, that the aerial ladder truck could make turns in and out of the site. Um, so we just had the first turning diagram up on the screen. I apologize, there are four three, three or four separate diagrams. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring those back up, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll just call the first one up first. We'll just go through them one at a time. Okay. We we, we didn't get these until today. We asked- Down, David, down one. Um, nope. and down one more, one more down, right there. And it took him some time to pull it together for it. So this is the first one, this shows entry into the site coming from the west which is where the fire station is and the ladder truck can just pull right in um number two david if for some reason they were coming from the other direction again pulling into the site from the other direction um number three this is the most important one so this shows um entry from both sides or ex sorry exit to both sides but turning around and backing up and coming out and what we find is we're fine all the way through here, except for the backing up. That right in this uh, northwest corner, we have a landscape island. That's David circling it with a linden proposed there. And that linden won't, is not conducive to a truck backing into it. So what we're going to do is change that landscape island to a striped pavement. So there's no obstruction for the, for the fire truck. The, it still complies with the zoning regulations on spacing between islands. Um, and the fire truck will be able to back up and pull out. Um, so we'll, we'll tighten that up when we do our final plans uh, to show that's a, a striped <clears throat> area of pavement. Um, other than that, uh, Sabine from A2 Land Consulting is available if you have any further questions on the landscaping aspects of the plan. Um, but that concludes what we wanted to present to you tonight. Thank you, Mr. Olson. At this point, I'll open it to the public for any questions they may have for the applicant. If you care to speak, please state your name and your address and come up here with a camera can see you and we can hear you. My 13 Karen Drive. Um, my question for you all is, um, do you have a structural engineer that's here or online? Um, I'm just a little concerned about the two walls and you know structurally how that works. Um, and then the other question was, I think the last meeting, they talked about changing the size of the dumpster, um, which would affect the parking area. Um, so that, those are my two concerns to address the fire situation. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the room? Anyone on Zoom that has a question from the public? I'm not seeing anyone with their hands raised at this time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, David. Mr. Chairman, if I can um, answer the question in regards to the structural engineer, anytime you have site plans um, and developments such as this nature, a structural engineer is required in order to get a building permit. It's also required through our department too. Um, at this stage, it's not required you know, from the planning and zoning commission because they're a very specialized engineer. So once you approve it or whatever, then the mm -hmm. architect and the structural engineer. The structural engineer will, will definitely be the one that's in charge of doing the walls. It's a very uh, specialized uh, field. Right. Very specialized. Because that's a big wall or two big walls. Mm -hmm. so. that, that's correct. I confirm what Beth says. It's handled at the building permit stage. Uh, Doug, can you just address the dumpster question? I can't remember whether we revised it or said we were going to revise it. We were going to, for the record, Doug DeVesta, we were going to um, leave the dumpster area as, as we proposed. 
Um, and if we needed additional uh, space in that area, we would have a smaller dumpster, and but they would be picked up you know, once or twice a week, depending on the usage of that building. We didn't want to lose the parking space. Is the issue. Correct. Thank you, Doug. Any questions from the commission? I got a couple. Sure. Um, what is the height of the top of the wall in relation to the asphalt? Which asphalt? The parking area. Which parking area? Against the wall. On our site. Yeah. Doug, can you answer that? Dave, can you go up? Can you bring up the um, site grading plan? I think it's SC4, maybe. Uh, okay, I'll get that back up. Basically, I want to know how much of the wall is sticking up above where the parking is. Is I think we've got it approximately. About three feet above it in some areas. Just again, it's for a for a safety reason. So vehicles will not, you know, obviously we don't want them to go. There's going to be a six inch curb around the parking lot. Then we've got a guide rail, and then we have uh, bumpers there. So we really it's about three about three feet above the um, actual pavement area. Doug, is there a fence on top of the wall? Thank you. Yes, there is. There's either going to be a fence or a railing. If it's a fence, what kind of fence? Will probably be a chain link fence. Chain link. If if we go with the, if we go with because I think even Todd mentioned that we we said we'd use a guide we would use a uh, railing or a uh, you know a safety railing or a safety fence on top of the wall. So if it would if it would be a fence, it would probably be a chain link fence, a black chain link fence. Black. Okay. Thanks. Okay. That's it. Any but uh, commission members on Zoom have any questions for the applicant? Bob, you got anything? No questions. Well, I have I have some questions. Um, is there uh, any plans for any um, plantings along the the retaining walls on the uh, for lack of a better term, the Doctor Mike side? <clears throat> Many, many plantings. Yes, that's what I um, thought. I thought I remember that from the first. From the first. Uh, can you call up the landscaping Sabine. plan, and I'll just have Sabine quickly refresh. Yeah, if you could, please. <clears throat> if I remember correctly, you guys talked about doing a planting along the top of the lower wall to kind of hide both both walls. We did both. Okay. If you, you run, if you run that, me, if you run that by me again, please. Sure. If you're looking at the upper level, which is adjacent to our site, that means one step down. Yep. You'll see alternating evergreens, both deciduous and needle. Um, they're alternating rhododendrons with different types of um, thuya. In this case, it's a dark American arborvitae. On the lower level, we have a combination of flowering deciduous, flowering evergreen to um, carry over a nice mixed background to not just screen the wall, but make it appear more beautiful. Excellent. How tall do the thujas yeah. grow? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. How tall do the thujas grow? The Ar American arborvitaes on the top are a little bit shorter. They vary between 10 and 15. The plicatum, which is at the lower part of the wall, can get up to 30 feet over time. They can be pruned and manipulated at will. They respond to adjustments well. So do you, you in your opinion, um, you feel like all this planting is going to hide the wall after a couple of years pretty well? I would say it's going to hide it, but a better term would be accentuated. We've added quite a bit of varying material, so you don't have just a solid wall of green here, but yeah. a large uh, amount of flowering material as well. It was not so much to hide the wall as to accentuate it. Well, that's that's kind of what I'm getting at. Is when I I was uh, I went down there this over the weekend, and I was looking it up. You know, as I got my ice cream, I was sitting on the tailgate of my truck and looking up the hill, and I was just kind of visioning it and what i saw now was woods 
and trees right, right. And, and just a mixture of native just woods for lack of a better term and yes. if there's if we obviously it's going to be developed and if it's just turned into something that's more prettier yes. woods <laughs> um, <laughs> i think that's an advantage uh i, I think i think that could be a a, a plus well, we um, have a designed woods here. We yeah. actually have some that's, taller that's shade right. trees that's at the front was, as well. You've explained it. You've explained it pretty well. Um, my second question was, I don't know if um, if this has been explored or if it's even possible, um, but is it possible to put like a like a stairs off the back so that the yeah. residents here don't have to walk all the way around the block in case if they want to get just down to Greenwood Avenue and use some of the businesses in town or or get down to the municipal center and and really you know take advantage of down living downtown um so i can answer that for you okay when we started the acquisition process so um just to a little history verde properties east station place bought the property behind dr mike's yeah. that had been divided off 10 years ago mm -hmm. uh, by robert allison who <clears throat> was dr mike Yep. And then in the last two years, the property behind the gift cottage and the property behind Dan O'Grady's office were purchased. <clears throat> I started those conversations for that acquisition by saying, we'd really like an easement to put a stairs from our project down. And the answer was no, <laughs> absolutely not. So, so, you know, we pushed a little bit as part of the acquisition process, but yeah. really on the Cravis acquisition from, from gift cottage, yeah. they were not willing to do that. Yeah, um, I, I, I know I know you're going into private property, but again, I, I literally went down over the weekend and I got an ice cream cone who's sitting on the tailgate in my truck. Nice. That was one of the things I was popping through my head. I was like, man, if I'm living there, it'd be nice to just be able to, I know it's going to be, you know, a bunch of steps, but to be able to just come down the steps and, and to just, you know, do my business or grab an ice cream cone or go to dinner and, and not have to walk around the block. It just, just a thought. So it, it seems like you guys already went there, but the, uh, we tried <laughs> the adjoining properties were not a fan exactly uh, right those those were my couple questions uh that covered everything thanks thank you Paul. thank you anything else from anybody on zoom commission mr chairman i'm seeing um a member of the public that has their hand raised okay <clears throat> no <Nope>, problem <clears throat> Go ahead, Paula, you're on mute. Hi, uh, Paula Antolini, 19 Jacobs Lane. Sorry, my screen cut out during the public comment time. Thank you for allowing <clears throat> me. Um, I have three issues. One is uh, same concern I had at past meetings um, that uh, does this structure of three buildings considered one uh, have special engineering that's needed to be built on such a slanted property? I would think special iron beams, whatever it is, I'm not an engineer, but um, it seems like something specific would be needed to hold all of that weight. The same goes for the tiered parking lot. Uh, another concern is the driveway. What is the slant of the driveway in ice and snow? Seems like it would be heading for the retaining wall at the uh, tiered parking lot. Third, um, the uh, Parking in the garage. I'm wondering what that radius is to have a, a turn for a car, because I understand either one or both of the garages are for the handicapped apartment that's on the lower level. I might have that wrong, but I think that's what I understand. Um, and um, I just thought of a fourth one is the soil was said to be uh, that you were not going to add soil, so the ground was going to be very stable. But now recently I saw some text that said you were going to be adding soil. So I'm wondering what that's going to do to the stability. I'd also like to know why, uh, maybe I missed it, but nothing was shown as far as a side view or a view from Greenwood Avenue to show exactly how these tiers are going to look, how high up they are. But I'm particularly wanting to see the slant from the side to show how the building is going to be held up, et cetera. But what that exactly looks like, I don't think we've been shown that yet. Thank you. 
Um, okay, first, there's no special engineering required to build the building. There's just regular engineering. Uh, Doug DeVesta, our civil engineer, has presented these plans. He's designed them, and they've been reviewed by the town's engineer. Uh, James didn't review these, right? No. no. So the town's consulting engineer, Todd Ritchie, um, and there's no comments that would question the stability of the site and its ability to hold the buildings. David, can you call up the architectural plans um, page nine, which is what we showed at the beginning of this hearing? While he's doing that, I'll just keep talking. Uh, none of the parking spaces in the garage will be assigned to any particular unit. Um, in any particular lease, the handicapped accessible <clears throat> unit could lease those spaces. It's uh, sort of an extra uh, for whatever units want the garages, uh, but there's, they're not assigned to, to these specific, specific uh, units. So uh, what, what this page nine is showing on the bottom is the front elevation and the top elevation is the rear. Can you scroll down one page, please, David? This is the elevation from the eastern side uh, of the two buildings, and you can see the slope of the driveway there at the bottom. Um, and then go up to page two, please. Uh, Dave, can you um, scroll up a little more slowly on that? Yeah. I just wanted to see the slope a little better. It was cut off on the bottom of the yeah. screen. Can you go back to the slope of the driveway, David, please? <clears throat> One more page. There we go. Thank you. And then page two, please, David. So that's what we believe this will end up looking like with the walls, although those uh, landscape plantings are not fully drawn and they're immature. Um, as Beth noted, those retaining walls will have to be designed by a structural engineer that's handled at the building permit stage. That might be considered a special engineer. Um, as Beth said, they're highly specialized, but uh, you know, that's, that's what they do. I like the trees. Um, Sabine, are, are those um, trees we're planting or are they trees we're, that, that are existing? I'm pretty sure we're planting those, but. You're cutting those. Um, when I look at this plan, that looks like a uh, speculated, those look like they're existing trees because we have three tall columnar trees where the wall begins to curve, which is more or less centric, centric to the rest of the site. And then we have more or ornamental trees, which are reaching like a 15 to 20 foot height on the sides, which would be more indicative of that one smaller tree you see at the base. Yep. And in, in our landscape plan, if you take a look at it, we paid special attention to what this is going to look like as you look from Greenwood Avenue into that driveway between the Gift Cottage and the Dr. Mike's building uh, into the hillside and up to our project. We've got special plantings right in that area for that, um, that view. Um, Doug, can you just talk about the soils and, and the extent to which we need to bring fill on site? Did we lose Doug? I was going to say, I think we might have lost Doug. <laughs> no, he's muted. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Uh, do you want me, you want me to show the cross sections, Peter? That's sure. the best way of doing it? Yep. Um, I think it's SE 7 and 8, maybe. And while David's bringing those up, do you recall off the top of your head what the slope of the driveway is coming in? I believe it's around 5%, which is standard. Okay. It's not very steep. There we go. So this is section AA. So this, so the dash line, and this is a this this is a profile that is to scale. So your horizontal and your vertical um, scales are 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 equal one to one. So what you're seeing is what what it looks like um, in actuality. So the dash line is your existing line. Your, your solid line is your proposed. 
So the area from around station 60 out to uh, uh, 115 or so, it's gonna be all fill material. And some of that fill material will come from the site itself. Whatever we excavate out for the foundations will be pushed over there and there'll be structural material used under the under the um, parking lot that would be that a um, geotech engineer will provide the specs on that material and that will obviously be and material behind a wall will be designed by the structural engineer and the, and the tech engineer and then if you go to the next page you'll see the other section bb doug will the soil be compacted as it's installed um, to the best of my knowledge, yes. I don't. I don't do structural design work, but and just as standard engineering practice, the material most likely will be packed, uh, will be put in lifts, meaning we'll put like 12 inches of material down, compact it, test it, make sure it meets a certain um, porosity and compaction, and then another layer would go on and go and so forth. So there'll be a a, a geotech engineer on site as the material comes in and being compacted uh, per the specifications of the. Um, structural engineer and the geotechnical engineer. Thanks, Doug. Mr. Thanks. Chairman, I just have a point of uh, information clarification on the illustration that was shown with the trees. Go ahead, Paula. Um, can you bring back that screen with the trees when they were discussing the, the large trees? Um, I wanna use that uh, to make a point that the layout that I'm looking for is in relation to the parking area of the, uh, the gift cottage, that level, I would consider that ground level. The, the bottom line of this illustration doesn't seem to be the parking area. It seems to be high up and it's hard to tell what the relationship's going to be, how high up this building is going to be. Um, I'd also want the same thing with the slant of the driveway to see where it is and, and where those walls are in relation to the, I'm gonna call it ground zero which of that lower parking area. I think that's the, the largest visual impact that the town is gonna to have on these structures. So that's, as we make clear, this is an artist's rendering, <laughs> right. but it is intended to be the view from Greenwood Avenue <clears throat> in the driveway to the parking area. The Doug, do you know the height of the bottom of the bottom wall above the parking lot? My memory serves me correct. It's around anywhere between eight and 12 feet, possibly. I don't have my, I don't have a plan to scale it up on you right here, but it's in that neighborhood. And it varies depending on where it is on the site. Right. So we think this yeah, is so. Of, so it's approximately. I have it in my notes here. It's approximately eleven feet tall, and, and, and like and like Peter said, it will vary depending on where you are uh, relative to the existing grade uh, along the north property line. Okay, so there's no illustration shown uh, with the parking lot level. Well, yes. The, if you look at my my cross sections, they that does show the the rate of relationship of the parking lot and the retaining walls. Do you have that illustration to show me? We right did, we, 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 just had, we just had them up. From above, the one from above, the aerial view? No, no, the cross section we did, A and B. Okay, but that didn't show the parking lot below, it just showed the side view, but it didn't show the parking lot below. Okay, I've made my point, but that's what I think needs to be shown here, whether it's in photographs or in an illustration. Thanks so much. Thank you. Any other questions from the public in the room? Yeah, I have a question. I'm sorry, Bob, one second. I'm asking whether that rendering that you have there is to scale. It's not. As we noted, it's an artist rendering. It's right. roughly to so, scale. So I'm just noting that because we've seen, you know, you can make it look much better if it's not to scale. It just gives a it's an illustration. Right. But in a place and then there's architectural attached right, to that illustration. Right, it's a cover of right, the but architectural. I know. But okay. It's, but I'm, well, I'm making the point that it's not drawn to scale. So no, it is not. No, it's not. I'm it's close to drawn to scale. It's a picture. Right. Well, it's based on the civil engineering plans. So it's not right, made up. 
Right, so, but it's not exactly the scale. So it's a 27 foot wall with a six or eight foot fence and a 40 foot building. Right. Okay. Okay, Bob, you had a question? No question. Uh, this might be for Doug. Uh, technically, what they're doing here is creating a plateau with the two retaining walls to level out somewhat the building site where the building will go and the parking lot. Is that true? Yes, it is, Bob. Okay, thanks, Doug. Any other questions from the commission members? Yeah, um, I do. Um, I was confused last time when you were talking about the parking, the, the, the garage parking, the underbuilding. Could you explain that again? Because I wasn't clear. You were talking about, could you explain it again? Sure. David, can you call up the basement plan, please? We have four garage bays, garage doors. Okay. Visually from the outside. On the inside, each of those serves two head-in parking spaces. Okay, so Tandem. one, two, tandem parking spaces. Okay, so front if, you, and back. if you could just like walk walk me through it. So okay, if, if you decide as part of your unit you want to rent the garages, mm -hmm. right? That's part of your rent. You'll pay a little bit extra. But this is a garage door. And when you pull in, there's two spaces, one in front of the other. Okay. You can put one car here and one car here in each space. Or you can put one car here and use this for storage. Okay. We don't think that's the whole thing. You have to rent the whole thing. We don't think the storage part should really occur, but there should be room for some storage there. We're counting these as parking spaces. So, you know, we don't want piles of stuff there. We want them to be parking spaces. Okay. And so there's two spaces. Now, so, the question of everybody has is, well, what happens if I'm in this car and there's one behind me? Well, you call your husband and say, move your car. I got to go to work. That's a domestic. Same thing that happens in a driveway. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, thank you. I, yep. I was thinking that each of those bays were each was individual and people were going to be like jockeying no, for no. space and that made no and okay. there's a divider between the two so these two are separate okay all right thank yeah. you the, the two spaces will go to one unit okay you also mentioned so one of the units the lower one is ada in building c right yeah Okay. The lower in the back is uh, entry from the ground and will be ADA. Okay. Quiet. What is parking like for that? There's a handicapped space on the surface for that. Right in front of it, right? Yeah, right in front of it. Um, that person could rent the garage space if they want. Um, I think you can get from the garage to that unit inside without going up a, a floor, but I don't know for sure. Yes, yeah. yeah, Kurt says you can. Um, so that's so not you can get straight into it. You don't have to be well. It's not straight into it, but as you can see, it would be kind of around. No, but you don't have to like be climbing up. No stairs. stairs yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, people that rent. Okay, so interesting. So you rent the apartment, you rent the unit, and then you pay extra in order to be able to use the under, the underneath garages. Correct. We have fifteen units, but we only have four garages. Which so is not everybody gets a garage. Okay. And so if you if you're a if you have a one bedroom apartment and you have one car and you don't really care if you have to park outside, that you know you get cheaper rent. But if you want the amenity of a garage, it's going to cost you an extra hundred, two hundred, three hundred dollars a month. Okay. And that's first come first there. serve. Once they're rented, they're rented. Yeah. Okay. Um. So that was one of the questions. Um. Yeah, I, th I, I think that's it for now. Thank right. you. Thank you for clarifying. Anything else from the commission? No. Anything else from the public? Go in once, go in twice. Okay, I'm gonna close this public hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is JAR Associates, 185 Francis Plain Street. Thank you. Thank you, Doug.
Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Wilson, are you representing the applicant here? Or something? I am. Okay, I need to get my spiel again. It's a busy hand. Uh, before you start with this application, I'm going to recuse myself mm -hmm. from, the, from the JAR application. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very good. Mm -hmm. Have a seat. Good evening. My name is Peter Olson. I'm an attorney with an office here in Bethel at 275 Greenwood Avenue. My firm name is Land Use and Conservation Council. I'm here tonight on behalf of JAR Associates, which is the owner of the property at 185 Grassy Plain Street. You may know it as the Burndy building, and we've kept these pictures here for months, and so I'll just point to them again. <laughs> JAR is represented uh, here tonight by Tony Rizzo sitting in the front row, and our civil engineer, Michelle, Michelle McCauley of Artel Engineering. We were last here for a public hearing. What is on the screen? Trying, <laughs> what the <laughs> picture is? Can you turn off the false um, video? <laughs> oh, okay. We were last here for a public hearing on June 13th. We received an initial set of comments from the former town engineer, James DeMeo, and we responded to those comments, provided a response on July 13th. And I'll introduce Michelle in a moment. She'll go through those changes for you. We haven't had a responsive letter from the town engineer, the, new, the consulting town engineer on the revised plans. Hopefully we'll present our changes to you tonight. You keep the hearing open so we can get those comments in <laughs> just in case there's something that we have to deal with um, and then close the hearing at the next meeting. So I do want to talk a little bit about butterflies. <laughs> um, we had delayed coming back to you before June 13th so we could get some hard information about what's known as the metal mark butterfly. We had uh, asked the State Department of Energy and Environmental Protection for review of the natural diversity database for the site. That's a statewide database where they record sightings of uh, endangered critters, basically. And we, we knew we would get this, but we got a hit for the metal mark butterfly. And that letter was provided to you in your, and you should have it in your record. And they basically made some recommendations for how to deal with the metal mark butterfly. Um, but we didn't think that was going to be enough. So we did a little more digging. Um, by way of background, the metal mark butterfly is kind of orange and black. Um, and it uses only one plant, the round leaf ragwort, for its cocoons. You would think natural selection would take care of this butterfly, but it hasn't yet. It just needs this one plant, brown leaf ragwort. Brown leaf ragwort likes limestone soils, and our industrial park, the Clark Business Park, has lots of limestone soils, which you can see just by driving through there. You can see a lot of limestone rock, which leads to limestone soil. Like, uh, like right behind Bethel Power, across the street from this site is an open excavation site. You can see the limestone. Um, so we engaged Professor David Wagner of the University of Connecticut to do a site review. He is the expert on butterflies, particular metal mark butterflies, and there appear to be nobody else who knows anything about them. He's the guy. And it took us a long time to get him on board and out to the site. Um, probably the foremost expert in the country. He advises the state DEP on the NDDB hits about butterflies and, and how to deal with them. So we're pretty comfortable we got the right guy. On July 11th, he conducted a site review uh, in person on the site. I was there, Jim McManus was there, and we stomped around looking for butterflies and round leaf ragwort and found none. Uh, he did not observe any indication of unmarked butterfly populations. He didn't observe any round leaf ragwort growing anywhere on the site. He did observe some possible stalks that may have been round leaf ragwort, um, but bottom line, no butterflies. So, we think the NDDB hit is from the Lime Kiln Quarry, which is a couple miles away, a mile away on the other side of Simpok Pond. Uh, Dr. Wagner was aware of that site and thinks that's where it comes from as well. Um, so, but because the business park does have the right kind of soils, we wanted to do something to show that we were being sensitive to the metal mark butterfly population and maybe it'll come back, who knows. Um, Dr. Wagner did prepare a report for me I received it today. I emailed it to everybody I could think of, to Tony, to Michelle, to Beth, to David, um, and printed out 11 copies to bring to you. And then I got an email from Dr. Wagner saying, hold on, I need to add some text to it. So I can't give you the report tonight, um, but we'll get it in finalized as soon as we can. Um, so uh, Michelle will go through the areas that we're gonna do this, but this is essentially what was recommended in the NDDB letter. 
and what Dr. Wagner recommends, which is to plant open meadow areas with a wild flower nectar uh, pollinator mix. That's what they like for food, uh, particularly black eyed Susans. Um, and then we're just going to cast round leaf ragwort in the wooded areas on the site, some seeds, and see if they take. They like cedar areas, and we don't really have any cedar on site. There's a, a few um, like stumps of cedar, but, um, but we're going to just throw a bunch of stuff down there and see if it takes. And if it doesn't take, well, we try. Uh, Dr. Wagner doesn't expect there to be success, but the way that I figure is if you keep trying, then maybe it'll come back. Um, which will make harder to develop your site in the future. But yeah, I think we're done on that side. <laughs> um, so let me introduce Michelle and let her go through the changes to the site plan. David, if you can call up the revised site plan uh, on the screen. Thank you. Good evening, Michelle Morris McCauley, um, Arthel Engineering 304 Brookfield, uh, Federal Road Um. So there was a bunch of comments. We had about 26 comments from SLR, the town consulting engineer. Um, I'm just, I'm not going to go through every single one of them, kind of lengthy, but I figured I'll hit the high points. Uh, David, could you go to uh, four, sheet four? I think it's the overall grading plan. <clears throat> Keep going. Keep going. One more. Okay, so this is the overall grading plan. Um, I'll just stand over here. It's okay. So drainage wise, we have a stormwater basin and we have some infiltration areas over here and kind of off the site we have. This is the older plan, David. Do you have the newer plan? Sorry. I will try to find it. This is what I have in the Google Drive for tonight. I had emailed them to you while you were on vacation. July, thir July 13th. <laughs> yeah, the plans are dated July 7th. Oh, uh, okay. You got them seven three. Um. Yeah, they're um they're not in the Google Drive for tonight, but I can pull them up. Um. Probably in there. I have full. I have joints too. If that'll be easier too yeah. for them to use. Yeah, and I'll and I'll pull them up on the screen as well so they can yeah. be seen. So they can follow along with you. Okay. So for stormwater treatment, yeah. there you go, that's it. Um, we have infiltration areas. We have the stormwater basin here. We have an infiltration area in the southwest corner, an infiltration swell here, and for this building, a larger infiltration over there. Um, one of the comments that we had received was for this infiltration in the southwest corner, we had it kind of down in the slope. He asked us to move it out of the slope. So I shifted it up in the parking lot where it was flat so that we don't um, impact the soils and create any erosion. Um, down in this area, we had um, what, with the entrance coming into the, the building two, we had a little bit of a low point. So on the blow up, which is on the other sheet, I added some spot shots so that we create um, overland flow into the swale, which will you know, go under and get into the, oh, sorry, into the infiltration system below. 
He also requested that this existing pipe that we have here, it was a, a flatter slope that I increased the slope. So I have a note to that pipe will be replaced and increased to about 0.61%. Um, we had for building three, I had an infiltration system up here. I removed that infiltration system. And uh, if, David, can you slide it so I could see building? I gathered all the stormwater and brought it into this lower corner so that we don't have any impact on the slope coming down below. Um, he had he had asked us that for we have a couple of little riprap um, outlet protection. I size these based on the stormwater flows coming out of the stormwater basin and the pipes discharging to the basin. Um, so these are all appropriately sized. Um, the biggest thing that he had asked was to update our parking analysis to do one and a half spaces per thousand square feet of building. So by doing that calculation, it increased the required parking to 278 parking spaces. So I provided an additional four spaces here, another four here, and then we increased the parking spaces down here. So now we have for the whole complex here are 280 parking spaces. Um, his other comment was for building three, since it's kind of independent and it doesn't really connect to the parking lot up here to make sure we have enough parking spaces per the one and a half per 1000, which would require 23 parking spaces. So we adjusted the layout here so that we could provide 23 parking spaces for that building. So it's pretty self-contained and independent of all the parking up, up, the, up above. Um, he also asked that we provide sight lines for this building to show, to make sure that, you know, you could see the cars coming down. We we showed a 200 foot um, sight distance, which, and we provided a little grading to cut back the, the hillside a little bit. 200 is a little more than it's necessary since the speed limit is 25 and they'll be just decelerating coming down the hill for the light. Um, so we think we have more than adequate sight distance. Um, David, could you go to 5A, please? Sorry, 5B, next one. Um, this is our landscaping plan. And as Peter mentioned, we're showing, so we showed some seed mix areas. This is the casting for the um, round leaf ragwort. Ra round leaf ragwort <laughs> for casting in this wooded area and down here. And then we did a wild mix flower here. And when we did some plantings, including the black eyed Susans uh, to promote for the butterflies. And we also have a, a wild flower grass seed mix in the stormwater basin, all to help promote, you know, for the butterflies. I believe that was majority of the revisions, you know, based on his comments that we made to the plans. Oh, we also provide truck turning templates for WB62 vehicles. I don't believe we think there'll be anything bigger than the WB50s, but we provided the 62s as he requested and they can get in and out with no issues. Thanks, Michelle. You're welcome. Thank you. So that's all that we have for tonight. Happy to answer any questions that you have. We open it to the public. Anybody in the room have any questions for the applicant? Anybody on Zoom have their hand raised, David? <laughs> uh, I'm not seeing any raised hands at this time, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Commission? Questions? Okay. With that, I'll close this public no, hearing. No, 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 no. wait. No. <laughs> nice try, though. Oh. <laughs> we, we would like it to be closed, but we still need to receive. Uh, sign off from the consulting engineer on the revised plans. Okay. And just in case there's something in there that we have to address, we'd like you to keep the hearing open until August 8th. Hopefully you'll be ready to decide it on August 8th before your summer break, but that's that's our goal. Okay. Then, for the record, we're continuing this public hearing. Any questions from commission members on Zoom? Sorry. Any questions from commission members on Zoom? Come over. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I, I asked the commission members, but I didn't get any answers. Okay, no, no, no question. But we'll be able to close this uh, in our first August meeting, right? Our only right. August. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Paul, you, you recused yourself. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. I can't get the visual of the butterfly turned out of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, they're hard to find. <laughs> you you all put butterflies on your resume. That's a yeah. They are hard to find. That's what they look like. Oh, oh pretty. Really? Nice. Yeah. Well, I hope you have like appropriate clothing to see what yeah. Is this Lake Peter number two in butterflies? Over on uh oh. Harris's property. They have a patch of the the stop war, whatever it is. Probably. <laughs> okay. Next item on the agenda is to open the public hearing for K and P Associates LLC. Um, Penny, can you read with me public notice for us, please? Okay, public notice. The Bethel Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on August 8th. August 8th. Okay. Okay. That's what, it's supposed to be uh, uh, July 25th. No, I'm sorry, July 25th. Hold on, let me think about this. He's confused me. It's Peter's fault. <laughs> Today is the 25th. No, we do not read that. Our, leaf, our public hearing is scheduled for August 8th. Okay. Okay. For KMP Associates. That's correct. Okay. The legal notice went in the paper and the advertising deeds are on top of the legal notice. The attorney representing the applicant confused me today. Okay. <laughs> and he will pay for it again. <laughs> All right. Next on the agenda is our business meeting. So I'm going to seat Doug Cooney for Penny Grant and Linda Curtis for Rich Tibbetts. Minutes. Did everybody have an opportunity to review the minutes? I move that yes. we accept the minutes from. I'll second. Bob seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nays. Abstentions. So moved. Invoices. Do we have any invoices? I don't have a full time secretary, so I don't. We have no invoices, invoices for this meeting. <laughs> Would I get help? No, we don't. Yes. Next on the agenda is the work session. First item is uh, 42 Nashville Road. I'd like. Uh, Mr. Be, Chairman, I'd like to recuse yes. myself from this. For the record, Beth Cavagna has recused herself. I also am going to recuse myself from this application. All right. Thank you, Mr. Stanley. We have a, a notice from our first selectman's office that uh, Penny Kess is going to read into the record for us. Uh, Day July 18th, 2023, to Beth Cavagna, Planning Administrator, from Daniel E. Carter for selectman subject. 42 Nashville Road, CGS 8-30G application. After advice from town council, please retain an outside consultant for a review of the affordable housing application, the 42 Nashville Road received on June 27, 2023, respectfully, Daniel E. Carter, First Selectman Town of Bethel. Thank you very much. And for the record, the outside consultant, SLR Consultants of Cheshire, Connecticut, have been retained to review the application. And we're going to schedule a public hearing for September the 12th, 2023, contingent upon the receipt of the report from SLR Consultants. And I just, do we know why we've been asked to do that? Because Staff has refused themselves from the application. So we need somebody to sit. Yes. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Okay, next on our agenda is 2224 Nashville Road. I'm again. I'm back. LLC <laughs> and <laughs> Lorena Amazi, yes. zone change from R10 to Village Center. 
with GOG overlay. Um, comments or questions or discussion points from the commission um, on this application. Has anybody uh, given some additional thought on how we might want to approach this? There's been a lot of testimony mm -hmm. about the. Uh, I have the maps. Two sites need to that are involved. One is currently industrial, the other is residential. Uh, there's a home exceeding 200 years old, I think, if I did the math the anywhere near correct. Um, knocking, down, <clears throat> knocking down a perfectly functional house. That was. I, sorry, can, I can't hear you. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if the commission wants to consider it and, and what our guidelines are. I would look to staff to help with, with this. Um, considering that half of the property is already commercial use, is there any thought or discussion on potentially approving the zone change for that and retaining the current uh, zone for the house that's sitting there? Do you have any guidance on that or is that within the bounds of this commission? Well, I mean, basically what you're doing is you're, you're looking at um, an application that is requesting a zone change. So when you request a zone change, what my first recommendation is that you refer back to your plan of conservation and development. Um, you also, there also is a request here to apply the TOD overlay zone to it too. So I think that those are two very good guiding documents that um, would help you determine if this is an appropriate change of use. Um, keeping in mind the um, adjacent neighborhood or the adjacent property. Um, that's where I would start. So the question I have for staff is, are we still within our time when we don't make a decision on this tonight? Yes. So you have time. Meeting? Okay. What I would suggest to the commission then is that um, we each take a look at the documents that are reference referenced and be in a position to have a further discussion at our next meeting and make a decision on the application. Do we have any um, comments from those commission members on Zoom? I have a comment. I would like to see, you know, the uh, construction yard go back to residential, but not at the expense of a 200-year-old house. So I would like to see keep the 200-year-old house and possibly build residential on the other thing, but that's not what they applied for. So somehow we got to convince them that they, if, if they want to build anything there, they're going to have to build on the construction site. I agree with Bob. So I, I have a question to piggyback on that. Um, do we have the authority to break the two sites into individual things? That's number one. They are individual sites, right? They're two individual lots. They're two individual. Yeah. So we do have, they the, have the same owner, but they're two individual. Lots. Okay, so we have the ability to say, Yes, for this, no, for that. You do, but the request is for both. <laughs> no, I understand. No, I, I, okay. I, I, no, I understand that. I was just wondering if you, about... if you were looking at the garage industrial commercial use and you're looking at the surrounding properties and what are, the, what are those uses associated mm -hmm. with it, right. They're residential in nature, right. obviously. Right. Um, except you, there is a salon or something to the left of the yeah, property. To the left, right. so, you know it, it. It. Yes. Okay. But one thing I just want to mention to you too: you always you have to remember that the town of Bethel doesn't have, um, outside of the historic houses that are noted on the National Registry, we don't have a DIST as a protection for demolition permits. Correct. Okay. 
That's understood. I, I have Penny, are you all set? One second. Hang on a second, Paul. That was actually going to be my next question, but I think you answered it, which is if if the owner owns that house at what 24, we can't tell him them what to do with that house. It's it's theirs. They can if they wanted to apply for a demo permit tomorrow. They could do they could apply for a demo permit. And we have no there, there's no no you can't kind of thing. No, not in relation my to my understanding unless the house is on the National Historic Registry. Right. right. It's totally up to the owner of the property. Correct. That's right. What they want to do with it. Right. As long as it's within ordinances and guidelines. Right. No, I'm just right. That was that was my question. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. If we if, if we deny this this change, we would also be denying the TOD overlay for use in that area. And that was one of my big points when we were writing the TOD was that I didn't want to see them tearing old houses down, whether they're on the national registry or not, in order to build more units in the downtown area. I like to see the downtown area, you know, built up a little bit, but we don't want to lose some of the old houses we have either. Well, if you remember during the TOD process, Bob, um, and if you look at, uh, especially along Greenwood Avenue and uh, Grand Street, <clears throat> the principal planning ish thing that we did was we said, let's keep our old homes and allow them to do uh, the cottages or like behind um, 220 Greenwood Avenue. Yeah, that was, the, that was the intent, yes. That was the intent and the intent has worked in most of the instances, I would say, along Greenwood. When you think about the improvements that have been made along Greenwood Avenue, and it's really due to the TOD. You wanna move this to the next meeting? Ken, I'm sorry. are you moving this to the next meeting? Yeah. Okay. I, I know, wait, I know Peter, Peter mentioned last, meeting something about trying to save the old house but he didn't think it was possible because the foundation wasn't strong enough to support what they want to put on the into the old house and, and that becomes a problem there's ways of solving that well i, I just want to offer that um that's been going through my head about this I, I don't necessarily just look at it in the immediate. Um, I'm looking at it kind of long overhaul. That the way a property owner maintains their property tells a story about the way they're going to maintain or create or whatever property in the future. And that really, and that concerns me about um, the maintenance, not of the, not of the commercial, not of the industrial part, it's industrial, but the way that the owner has, what the owner has done to the house at 24. And that's a real concern to me. Um, I don't know if that affects whatever decision we make. Um, but that's in the back of my head, as it has been for other projects that we've looked at. Um, you know, past performance is sometimes a guarantee of what will happen in the future. So um, I like the idea of looking at the documents. Beth, would you be able to zone us in mm -hmm. on what we should be looking at? Yes because that's a lot of material to thumb through to go and find something. Um, uh, yeah, that, that's it. I, I just, I, I just, I don't have a good feeling about it. Thank you, 
Any further conversation this evening? Well, I just have a comment on, on that application. Um, it might not be popular, but I'm going to say it as far as the old Are house. <laughs> as far as the old house. Um, that house uh, is, you know, 200 years old. Um, so it has 200 years of maintenance. It might not have 200 years of good maintenance. Mm -hmm. And whether this uh, applicant uh, purchases house, I'm not sure exactly when he purchased it or him or her uh, purchased this house. Um, but it might not be feasible to save the house. And I think that's what Peter was getting at uh, a meeting or ago, a uh, time ago. Um, and I understand that. Uh, I do. I do. I don't want to see a 200 year old house torn down. Um, uh, I would love to see it refabbed or, and rehabbed, I should say. Um, but you, you don't want to hold someone's feet against the, the coals and say, you need to fix this house when it just might not be worth it. But that being said, I don't think the answer is tear it down and build a 14 unit. I think it's 14 units or 21 units they were applying for. Uh, was there was there site plan there? Um, so I, I had suggested maybe some townhouses there um, in in that area. I might that might be a better use of that property because uh, I also kind of look at the contractor's yard uh, almost as a non-conforming lot in that area because um, you're coming up on on the TOD village and and um or the village center i should say and, and then you have r10 there and it's kind of then you have this little commercial slash industrial spot there and it's i almost look at it as non con non-conforming so i'm trying to think of ways to make it conforming um but i i don't think slamming an apartment building is in there so i'm trying to think of ways to to work with the applicant um to still to still figure a way for them to develop their property, but to do it in a way that benefits them and the town, um, if that makes sense. So I, I again, I, I just hope you guys don't think I want to, you know, see them tear down this old house. But I do see their side of the coin. If they're saying the house is too far gone, I I, I get it. I'm I'm gonna have to. We're we have to take their word for it. If the foundation is shot, it can't be re saved it's not worth it then that is what it is and i don't disagree paul but what i think the commission needs to keep in mind as we go through this next review is that what's in front of us is a zone change not an application to build it mm -hmm. okay it's right. purely for the zone change no. and an expansion of the but we have to keep that we have to keep we have to keep in mind what the zone change we have to keep in mind what the zone change um down the road get down the road exactly i don't disagree but, but right. the request in front of us is for the zone change and for the tod overlay to be extended i understand and that, just to go this is the first time that there's been an application for an expansion of the tod of the tod yeah. so it could be a yes precedent. okay all right thank you hey, real quick before i'm sorry beth could they could 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 they re uh is there is there a process that they could reapply with an application at the same time? Could could the applicant come in, say, I want to do a zone change, and if approved, this is the application I want to do at the same exact time. They can so do that. We, yes. So that we as a commission aren't sitting here going, well. We would give you, but then we don't really know what you're going to come in with, and there's a lot of what ifs and because that could be do that because of the expense yeah i'm just i'm just yeah makes me it would make me feel a little bit more uh confident in decisions i guess i think you're thinking more in terms of what you had done over on um uh chestnut street with the the cluster of housing that occurred over on Shasta, we did, I believe we did a zone change over there. Um, little thinkers. Yeah, where Little Thinkers was. Mm -hmm. That was before Part my time. Change. 
I, I can't recall if it was a conceptual that she received or if it was an actual site plan special permit. I, I can't remember. But gotcha. anyway, something similar to that. And my concern is that they presented a concept, mm -hmm. which I understand is not necessarily what it's going to look like, mm -hmm. but they've already given us something um and i have i have a lot of concerns about what they what they have presented they they could have presented any number of possibilities to say this is what we're kind of thinking of but they didn't do that so oh we got two more weeks to to work on I'm good. Any other comments from the commission? No, nope, not for tonight. Oh, not good. good. Any public input before we close? No, we can't. It's all. It's already closed. No. The, oh, the actual. Okay, meeting. so you're going to table. Yeah, I'm we're tabling 2224 Nashville Road LLC to our next meeting. Okay, thank you. All right. Any other public here, uh, public in, input before we close tonight's meeting? David, you have any hands raised? Not seeing any hands raised at this time, Mr. Chairman. And I make a motion that we close this evening's meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. See you next time. Thank you, Peter. <laughs>